Hello, welcome to the first video in my Catch Up to Sketch Up tutorial series. My name is Jessica. I'm going to be your navigator in this crazy world of Sketch Up that we got going here. Now this series is designed for interior designers and interior design students, but it is also designed for people who have never used SketchUp before. So beginners, this is for you. Now once you've downloaded SketchUp program to your desktop or your laptop, you should see the icon for the program are right there on your desktop. Double click on that icon and this window should pop up. To start a new SketchUp project, what we're going to do is click on the arrow that's located right next to the word template, kind of towards the bottom. And what it does is it shows you all the templates that are available for you to use, and it kind of depends on what project you're working on. So if you're doing basic architectural stuff like us interior designers do, you would probably select the architectural design template. But there's other ones like construction documentation, uh, urban planning, landscape architecture, woodworking, interior and production design, that's things for like kitchen design or bath design. Um, and there's also this cool template down here at the very bottom uh, that is for 3D printing. If you are looking at trying to make a model using a 3D printing maker, uh, this is the template that you're going to use to do that. Like I said, this is for interior design, so we're going to go ahead and choose the Architectural Design Feet and Inches template. Once it's highlighted in blue, go ahead and click on the Start Using SketchUp button. Sometimes it takes a minute or two for SketchUp to load, but this is the main screen that you're going to be working with. Notice at the very top we have a menu bar, very similar to Microsoft Word, AutoCAD, Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, all of these software programs have a menu bar. File and edit should look very familiar, that's where you go to print or copy or paste, save drawings. Um, and then there's some other menu options for you as well, and we'll get into those in future videos. But for now, at least you know where the menu bar is. Over on the left hand side you're going to see the toolbar. Now your toolbar might not be as large as mine. Don't go getting jealous on me. We're going to fix that here momentarily. But basically the toolbar is where you go to draw objects, uh, maneuver and manipulate them, as well as to kind of select them or zoom in and out of. Uh, there's a lot of different options over there. We're going to get to that here in a second. Over on the right hand side of your screen you're going to see a few panels, um, they call that the default tray, um, but this is where uh, we can work with materials and different components, we can search for some things, and we can actually load different things too as well as working with your layers. In the dead center of the screen you're going to see a very tall, dark, handsome man standing there. This is Bryce, I believe. SketchUp has a few different models um, that they use with different versions of SketchUp. He's there really to show you human height and how it looks uh, compared to the rest of the model. In all reality, he kind of gets in the way a little bit. So I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to click on Bryce. Bryce turns blue. He's got a little smurf in him, I think. Um, but basically anything that you select will highlight blue. That's how you know you've actually selected the object. I'm going to go ahead and click delete. And Bryce goes bye bye What's left on the screen, you're going to see three lines followed behind them by three dotted lines. So this is the x-axis coordinate system. Yes, it's kind of like CAD, it works on a coordinate system. The red line that you see is the x-axis and that controls um, the measurements uh, going left to right on your screen. The green line is the y-axis and that controls measurements going to the front and to the back of the screen. And you know, I can't tell what color that is, purple, blue, brown. I don't know what color that is, but the one that's going straight up and down is the z-axis, and that controls measurements that are going from the bottom all the way up to the top, up and down. Now the first thing that I want to do is make sure that you do have the large toolbar set up just like mine is set up on the screen. So we're going to go up to view in the menu bar, and we're going to click on toolbars in the little pop-up panel that shows up. A new window opens just like you see here and notice that I have large tool set checked. 
please make sure that yours is checked as well. I don't have anything else checked, but should you need other toolbars open, um, you can definitely come here and um, open them. With that checked, I'm going to go ahead and click close, and now you should have a toolbar that looks very similar to mine. The other thing I want to show you is the model information button and that is the little light bulb it's kind of grayed out in the very bottom left hand corner uh, if I click on it a window opens as well this is where you can control some information about your model you can kind of control what your dimensions look like uh, the text of your dimensions things like that the overall text you can change uh, the font and the size of the font leader lines all kinds of stuff right here units that's another thing that you can control uh, using the model info button if for some reason you decided that architectural was not what you wanted to work with you could go to decimal or engineering or fractional you can also change the precision so if you if 1 16th is too small to create your model with you can go ahead and change that precision maybe uh, 1 8th is a little bit better I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the 1 16th of an inch uh, for now I think that everything is fine for this moment so I'm gonna go ahead and click out X remember that if you ever need to change anything general about your model this might be a really good place to go Okay, I'm just going to show you a little bit about how to maneuver around in this particular drawing space. Over in the toolbar are a panel of tools that you can use to uh, move around. The pan hand is a common one found in a lot of design software. Um, it's a hand and if you click and drag your mouse, um, it's going to allow you to kind of go up and down. You can see how the horizon kind of changes, the viewpoints kind of change a little bit. It's important to note that SketchUp, this particular screen, is drawn in perspective. So when you start drawing, you're going to notice that lines do not look parallel. It's okay. We're going to kind of discuss that a little bit in this video. But for now, this is the pan tool, and it just allows you to kind of go left to right, maybe up and down a little bit as well. The zoom tool is uh, the magnifying glass. Uh, what's nice about the zoom tool is that you can also type Z to get and use the zoom tool. By clicking and dragging the mouse you'll notice that I'm kind of making that uh, x-axis and y-axis smaller. I'm going dragging down. If I drag it up it's actually going to make the y-axis bigger and I can kind of zoom into different parts. I'm going to zoom back out to about where we were. The zoom window takes it a little bit further. If you use the zoom window tool click and drag a box and whatever you find inside of that box is going to zoom up into your screen. This comes in handy if you need to focus on a specific area of your model and you don't want to have to take the time to use the zoom tool all the time. Zoom extents uh, will bring any drawn object into the screen's view. So your entire model, whatever you have drawn, will come completely into view. And as soon as I do that with nothing drawn, you can see that it takes me right back to the Y, X, Z axis. It's centered perfectly in my screen. I might not want that because we typically draw above the red line and to the right of the green line. The last tool in this area I'm going to show you is the orbit. This allows you to kind of uh, work with the 3D sense. Now you'll see this gray area that represents the ground and the white to blue represents the sky. So you can see how I can look under my model. I can look on top of my model. Just kind of like that. You just kind of get to move around. You're going to understand how to rotate your model so that you can see how it works. And all you do is click your mouse and drag it around. The move around tools, as I like to call it, are pretty easy, pretty self explanatory. Uh, if you have any questions, now might be a good time to uh, ask those questions to your instructor. Um, but for now, that is what we're doing with moving tools. Next up, we're going to learn how to do a little bit of drawing.